so this is the next piece that I'm going to be filming. This should be about three videos because even though it's a fairly basic, small, skinny style dresser, um, two videos will be devoted to the making of it. And then there will be a third video because there's going to be a fair amount of custom carving done on this now that I have it pretty much built. I haven't really started the carving so that will I'll, I'll probably keep in one separate video. But um, like I said, pretty basic. I've been making a lot of dresser style drawer sort of things recently. So these are all inset drawers, but they have a molding application around the face. And this again is one of those projects where the customer designed most of it. It's a very custom piece of furniture. Everything from the dimensions to um, the style and the paint color she had already given me. Um, there was a little bit of artistic license that came in with it, which I'll discuss throughout the videos. But in general, um, the decisions that were made on this were not really my own as long as, as far as aesthetics go. Um, once this is all said and done, this will be painted. So I believe it's going to be a mixture of white and light blue. I'm starting this build by making a base out of some scrap plywood from the actual build. Um, in order to attach all of my components to. So this is just four inch wide strips of plywood that I cut laps into either end. Um, my hand was in the way for cutting it on the radial arm saw, which is why there isn't a long segment of doing that. But I just cut laps on all the ends halfway down the piece, cleaned it up with a chisel, and then I could glue this together to make a rectangular base for my piece. So this is what it looks like before glue up and adding some glue. The thing I like about lap joints is because there's so much gluing surface, it makes for a very solid joint. So like I said, this was just scrap plywood. And the reason for making a base like this is because the cabinet will have something to sit on top of. There will be something to attach the feet to, as well as something to attach the molding to. So you won't see this, so it doesn't have to necessarily be pretty. And um, you don't want to put the bottom of your cabinet on a, uh, have a flat surface on the bottom of your cabinet because it's inevitably going to have undulations in the surface and it won't sit flat. So anything you try to attach it to won't be flat. So this is basically just a flat section you're making that um, your cabinet, like I said, could sit on top of. But now I'll have a flat surface to attach my feet as well. So I let this set up overnight with some C-clamps. And I could come in the next morning and trim this down to size. So I made this slightly oversized so I could I could cut this on my cross cut sled, just clean up the edges instead of having to, to deal with them with a plane or anything like that. I could just slice them down and remove all of that squeeze out from the glue up. And then I have a nice flat solid surface. So the outside of this is going to have a molding. I'm just using some scrap poplar. You can see the molding will sit flush on the bottom but high on top and that is where the cabinet will set. So to attach this molding I want to use splines. So I have my tall fence on my table saw and I'm just running all of my pieces through my um, saw blade in order to get a groove. So I did the outside edge of the base first and now all of my poplar pieces. So in order to get a little bit of a thicker spline, um, the blade itself is an eighth of an inch. I wanted a little bit over that. You can see there's my spline material testing it on there. So I just moved the fence over a little bit and then ran all my pieces through again. And then I'm doing the top as well. And then I'll have a groove that will be consistent on both, both the pieces that I'm mating to the surface as well as the surface itself see how that spline will sit in there and this will just make for a really solid connection between the two pieces and this is the bottom edge so you'll see the bottom will sit flush doesn't go be below the bottom of that base and then I'll have a lip on the inner edge to hide the bottom part of the cabinet so to attach this I need to add some miters to the edges so I cut one miter and then I'll put it on the piece make a mark and then go through and cut the other one and then my sides since there's no molding in the back of the cabinet my sides I'm just leaving long so I'm going off camera kind of test fitting that you could see I left my sides long and then I could join these together 
so I could put glue in those grooves, glue on the splines, and then glue on my molding, and this will be a super solid joint. Um, the one step I wish I would have done is I wish I would have routed the profile on my molding before attaching it to the base. I was kind of rushing at this point. It wasn't a deal breaker, but you'll see um, the router kind of rocks on the thinness of that poplar. It would have been easier to have done it beforehand. But I got everything glued in place, and then I could use a, a strap clamp on this and let this set up overnight. And then I could um, trim up the back ends once this was all glued. So the, f the feet on this were cu a custom design by the customer, and she kind of wanted a double circle. So this project I knew about before coronavirus came around, and I was lucky enough to be able to go to the store before they started closing to non-essential workers um, and get a lot of materials for my next couple projects, which is great because I could still do work. But um, the feet I didn't plan ahead for. So she wanted these double feet, and um, I, you could probably something you could order online, but I decided to make them on the lathe. So I had a Douglas fir piece of a 4x4 four four that I could make this out of. And the lathe part of this video is not going to be an instructional video because uh, an instructional tutorial because I just kind of started working on the lathe. I'm not super great at it. I could get what I want accomplished, but my technique is not what you would see on uh, much more proficient lathe turners. So it's basically I'm just turning a bunch of beads on the lathe and you could use um, So you, you, you can use a skew chisel for this to turn those beads and I could do that fairly well with smaller, a smaller diameter bead, but on these bigger ones I'm just not great at it yet, but I'm pretty good at doing it with just a, a, rounded, a rounded lathe tool. So that's what I ended up doing. The nice thing about filming yourself if you're trying to get good at something like the lathe is, by watching this over as I was editing the video, I could see a lot of the mistakes I was making and can improve them um, for the next time I start doing this. So you could see it's just a, a series of consecutive uh, beaded circles. So I could go through and, and kind of round them over very simply. I'm looking for consistency in them, but since it's four legs and two are in the back, if, if they're off a little bit, it's not going to be something you'll, you will notice. So I needed um, eight total, and each each foot would be, would be two, two beads. So just kind of smoothing it up, using the skew chisel to get a nice, nice curve and point where those, where those pieces meet. And then this is pretty much what those look like once I was done. I was fairly happy with them, um, considering, like I said, I don't have a ton of time put in at the lathe. And that is what it looks like off of it. It looked pretty cool um, off the lathe as well. So then I just went on my table saw and trimmed these up. And I'm using a little bit of a shim because in the center they're obviously not as big as the ends. Now I know you could cut stuff like this on the lathe, but once again, like I said, um, I'm not super proficient at it yet, so I just found it easier to do it on the table saw. So I could go through and cut off my ends using using a little shim to hold everything up and then just trim these into their sections. So then I had my feet. And this is going to be painted, so the little bit of roughness on the outside surface is not a huge deal. And they all turned it out fairly uniform, which was all I could ask for with with, with making these. So with the feet done, um, the the base was, was dry, and this is the part where I said it would be easier to have routed this molding beforehand. You could see I'm kind of teetering on the edge of that with the base of the router. It's doable, but there were a couple little spots where I probably have to patch because the router would tip a little one way or the other. To finish up the legs that I can now attach to that base, I'm just drilling a hole. I'm using a threaded insert. I don't love threaded inserts, but for an application like this, it's the easiest, uh, most rigid way to do it, I think. 
So there's the threaded insert. I just pre-drilled a hole that's a little bit smaller than the threaded insert itself. And then I could screw those into the legs. So the legs I'm keeping t as far to the edges as possible because this dresser is so skinny, it's already gonna be a little top heavy. So I wanted uh, the legs to be as wide as possible on the bottom. I pre-drilled some holes because these are gonna be bolted in place. And then I countersunk with a spade bit so that my bolts um, don't stick up into the cabinet. So that's just checking to make sure the clearance of the head of the bolt is below that plywood. And then I believe these were quarter inch bolts. Then I could just simply screw the legs in place. You could see how this base is nice. I could add molding to it and the legs to it and it will still be perfectly flat. And then I'll be able to attach the cabinet I'm making to it as well. And then this was the base. So the height of this was, was dictated by the customer. She wanted a, a specific height off the ground. In order to start making the cabinet, this is going to be pretty much like all, um, all the cabinets I make. It's a very similar process. I prefer to join all of my pieces with rabbits and dados. So the first step is to rough cut all of my pieces out. And the cabinet itself is final dimension, only about 12 inches wide. So this portion of the cabinet is, um, the molding on the bottom is a quarter of an inch. So this cabinet is 11 and a quarter is what I cut the width at it to be. And I needed two sides. So final dimensions on this is about 33 tall. And the base is about four and a half. So these were around 28 inches, these two sides. So I just cut those as well. Once I had my two sides, I was gonna put a rabbit on the back of it and that will be for the back panel. So you can see I have a dado stack in there and a sacrificial fence. I'm just gonna cut a shallow groove on the back. The back panel is only gonna be probably three thirty seconds of an inch. So that is what the groove I'm cutting is. And then this is cutting the top for the top panel of the piece. It's another rabbit. This one will be three quarters of an inch because it's going to have a three quarter inch piece of plywood on the top. So I cut that rabbit on both the tops. And then the bottom, the bottom, the, uh, the dado for the bottom shelf is a little higher up because it, remember it's sitting inside that molding that's on my base. And then I'm putting one center partition in the original photo, the customer had two drawers in this dresser, but once it was all pulled, put together, the two drawers would have been just really tall and kind of awkward looking. So we decided to change it to four drawers at the end of the day. But while I was making this, this was originally two, which is why there's this center partition um, in, the, in the cabinets. So I probably would have changed that a little bit beforehand if I knew it was going to be four drawers. So then I put this in my base, I squared it up, and then I took a measurement for the bottom. And then I could cut the bottom. And you could see now how it sits perfectly inside that frame. There's no gaps or anything. And it sits on the two edges, so you won't it won't teeter-totter on a flat bottom. It's only sitting on two contact points. So I could dry fit this together. The three shelves are the exact same size. Once I got that width, when everything was squared up, I just cut three and they don't go as far back as that back rabbit so I could put my panel in. And then um, I could just add glue to all of my dados and rabbits and put this together. Now, a lot of times with my cabinets, you don't actually end up seeing the sides because they're against the wall or there's a decorative panel on the edges. But this one is a free floating piece of furniture. So I actually had to use clamps on this. Usually I just put some screws in it to clamp it all together. As you can see, I'm adding some clamps. I have the, the two bottom shelves in, which aren't really shelves. They're just kind of braces for the cabinet. And then the top I'm putting in as well. Usually for the top, I'll make it into two pieces. But since this cabinet was so skinny, I just made one solid piece for the top. And I could clamp everything together and check for square. The nice thing about rabbits and dados is um, once if you make them properly, the cabinet is usually pretty square after initial glue up. And I had a piece of this kind of facade barnwood masonite laying around. Like I said, I'm kind of 
getting into trouble with not being able to go to the store because I can't plan everything totally out ahead of time. So I happen to have this piece of masonite and that's what became the back of the cabinet because I forgot to get a backer board for, for this piece. You won't see it, so it doesn't really matter what it was, and it ended up working out. So once it was square, I just attached the backer. The backer is a great way to square up your cabinet as well. If your backer is square and it doesn't sit on the back of your cabinet square, that means your cabinet's not square. So here is the base. And then the cabinet sits in there as well. There's the cabinet, it sits in there really nicely and for now I'm going to attach the cabinet to the base with just some drywall screws on um, the bottom I'll probably end up putting some shims in the bottom so that I'm going through solid wood into the base but just just to start working on the drawers I decided to just put a couple screws in there so it wouldn't rock around on me and I'll probably switch them out with something else later but that's how that's going to attach and this is now a, f a fairly solid piece and in the next video, I'll show you how I make the drawers.